Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Thomas Wang. I'm a MIS fellow with UT Houston. Thank you to Sages for allowing me to present today. I have nothing to disclose. <clears throat> for the surveillance of Barrett's esophagus, uh, the current widely practiced method is uh, the use of confocal, or conventional white light uh, microscopy with uh, random biopsy uh, every five, three to five years for high-risk patients. Um, but <clears throat> with current modalities currently being uh, put forth, uh, these surveillance recommendations are continuing to evolve and to change. <clears throat> the modality that I'm presenting today is a probe-based confocal endomicroscopy, which I'm going to refer to as PCLE. Uh, to give a brief background of how the technology works, there is a <clears throat> confocal probe that passes down the working channel of a standard endoscope, <clears throat> and the, um, the probe emits a, a laser light that uh, illuminates the fluorescein dye that is injected into the patient. And what this does is give you real-time bedside visualization of the uh, microscopic architecture of the mucosal surfaces. <clears throat> this is referred to as an optical biopsy. Um, these are the images that are obtained by the confocal probe. And this has a spatial resolution of one micron in the XY dimension. And in the Z dimension, there's a 100 micron depth. So you're getting an on fos view as you can see here, which is a little bit different than the, um, the vertical sagittal views that the traditional histology uh, obtains. <clears throat> For the diagnosis of the spectrum of disease extending from squamous uh, to eventual dysplasia, uh, there are validated image criteria, first pre um, presented at the Miami conference and now um, at the Kansas uh, criteria. But what I want you to focus on are the last two um, categories because this is where your clinical decision making is going to change. So for intestinal metaplasia, what we're looking for with these optical biopsies is the presence of uh, columnar uh, epithelium and more importantly the presence of goblet cells. The, uh, the quality of the goblet cells themselves also distinguish uh, intestinal metaplasia from dysplasia. Um, where they are clearly defined, it's uh, more consistent with intestinal metaplasia. But when the goblet cells um, over here become less uniform and the cells themselves become more pleomorphic in both size and shape, and you start to see uh, jagged sawtooth appearances of the epithelium, that's when you, you start to suspect that you're dealing with dysplasia. <clears throat> so here's a video um, of uh, intestinal metaplasia. Uh, it's important to note that the frame rate is about 200 frames per second, uh, which exceeds uh, your, your capacity for, for visual um, image interpretation. So it's very important for image review, and I'll play it for you one more time, for image review uh, using the, the, the bedside software to start and stop so you can really take your time to review uh, the nuances of the architecture. So pausing in the middle, here you're seeing the capillary actions of the red cells flowing through. And let me advance a little farther. Uh, again, you see the intestinal uh, metaplasia uh, here with columnar epithelium, and occasionally there are some goblet cells that you might be able to catch. So our research uh, project is really aiming to see how the, the application of confocal uh, PCLE change compares to uh, the, the standard, which is the random biopsies. Among other advantages, uh, our decreased time to diagnosis because you're obtaining an optical biopsy at the bedside. Uh, there's a potential for targeting biopsies using what you see at the bedside to direct your, your random biopsies. And there's also a potential for fewer required procedures. So in our study, we're looking at 39 patients. Uh, this is at a single center, tertiary referral center for reflux uh, between the period of June to February. We included all adult patients, regardless of their previous uh, Barrett's history diagnosis and workup. For those patients that did have a history of Barrett's, um, they, uh, these were all treated either with RFA ablation or a, or a surgical anti-reflux procedure. <clears throat> patients in excluded are those whose insurance did not cover uh, the PCLE procedure. <clears throat> I want to add that every patient that was uh, in our study that underwent PCLE also concurrently went, underwent uh, EGD with four quadrant biopsies during that same procedure. Uh, optical uh, biopsies were uh, used to make the diagnosis at bedside 
uh, before any of the pathologic uh, tissue biopsy results came back. These are our patient demographics. It's about 50-50 for patients uh, with uh, current, current PPI use. And one third of our patients had a prior diagnosis of BE. And again, I wanted to emphasize that all these patients with prior diagnoses of BE underwent treatment for this BE with either ablation, uh, reflux surgery, or both. Here are our results. <clears throat> I've broken it down into two sections, those for which uh, we detected Barrett's esophagus, as well as those for which we detected dysplasia. So on the left column is our PCLE uh, results. Um, across the board for both BE and uh, BE with dysplasia, our uh, detection rates were higher than for, uh, for quadrant biopsy. And these are our, our likelihood ratios and our sensitivities and specificities. <clears throat> it is quite higher for our dysplasia uh, results. So what does this mean for our patients? <clears throat> Out of our 39 patients, we had nine patients in which uh, PCLA made a, a change in clinical management. Four of our patients um, with, without a history of BE uh, had a positive optical biopsy um, that would have been missed by the, the pathological uh, diagnosis. And because of that, they will undergo a shorter uh, surveillance interval. Whereas before it would be every three to five years, now it would, um, for a missed uh, diagnosis, uh, now we're gonna uh, see the patient within one to three years for a consideration of repeat uh, endoscopic surveillance. In one of our patients, um, <clears throat> dysplasia was diagnosed by optical biopsy, and this was confirmed and validated by an experienced anatomic pathologist, and this, uh, this degree of dysplasia was missed uh, on um, pathology. Therefore, this patient benefited from treatment for this uh, dysplasia. And lastly, four of our patients who had a known history of BE underwent immediate ablation therapy during this uh, procedure um, saving them from another procedure. So in conclusion, patients uh, with a known history of BE, um, in that context, the use of PCLE may be used a little bit more aggressively in directing immediate ablative therapy um, or another EMR treatment per perhaps uh, during that surveillance uh, procedure. However, until institutional thresholds of both sensitivity and uh, negative predictive value reach um, the, the standards set forth by the ASGE, uh, P PCLE should be, uh, at least in tertiary centers, uh, be implemented as an, only as an ad enhancing adjunct. So in our ongoing experience with our prospective trial, how do we increase uh, these sensitivities and predictive values? So in our practice, it's good to think about this in uh, two arms. The first arm is going to be for the endoscopist side of things, and the second arm is for the patient side of things. From the endoscopist uh, perspective, we found that <clears throat> using circumferential standardized sweeps, similar to a four-quadrant biopsy, we're taking um, four-quadrant optical biopsy, sweeping around the mucosa at defined levels, <coughs> excuse me, defined levels for all four uh, quadrants uh, circumferentially. And again, with the video that I showed you, the images are, are going by really quickly. So you do benefit from a dedicated five-minute post-review. Post and approximately three of our patients, um, our five-minute post-review uh, enhances sensitivity of detection uh, by catching um, the diagnosis that would have been missed if it wasn't reviewed. Uh, finally, endoscopist training is a very important factor. This has been well described in the literature. Uh, validated image criteria that I, that I spoke with before are widely available for review and for uh, online um, training and, and testing to increase your, your endoscopist detection rate. And on the patient side of things, we've started to use the, uh, a silicone tip to stabilize the mucosa when you're de deploying the, the probe to enhance uh, the, and minimize um, image artifact. And along those lines, sedation and stomach desufflation also tend to help decrease motion artifact for better quality of, of images. So with that, I'd like to take any questions. 